uh, just a free for all of one, of one poor player. Hi everyone. Hey, look at us. Look at us here again. Here again on the internet, ready to uh, ready to explore the world of video games, specifically Star Wars video games. Ruby Rose twenty seventy seven. Thank you for the twenty eight month sub. Your name reminds me. Uh, I yeah, I patched Cyberpunk. I gotta check that business out. Uh, this is the wallpaper for today. The Dishonored Wolf posted. <laughs> An 18 minute and 14 second video about the problem with forced diversity. I, uh, let's just, let's try something else. You know what? And I'm going to turn off my, my, uh, my feed for a second to make sure I don't lose with wallpaper roulette here. Yeah. Fitting desktop image. You know what? This is fine. This is fine. All right. Back when the Wii came out, there was like a, a pretty cool wave of, the Wii getting really popular in retirement homes and like active living retirement communities and stuff. Uh, and there were a lot of just really cool photos of, of like of elderly folks playing baseball and stuff. You've got a DS in the background. Love to see it. All right. Making me tear up a little bit. Uh, all right. Here's what we got. It's, it's force Friday. So we're going to, we're going to check out the star Wars episode three activity center. Cause last time we played the episode three game, and this is now episode three for the PC, an entirely different thing made by Ubisoft. Uh, and that's important because, well, let's let's just go on a little journey. Let's go on a PC journey here because I tried this. <sighs> Everyone loves activities. Yeah. The Here, let's look at the back real quick. So this is the back of the case. Whoa. Uh, bring the force home with Star Wars Activity Center. Stand back. What stand back? Is that the first thing it says? As Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and his apprentice Anakin Skywalker, along with a cast of memorable characters from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, turn your computer and printer into a home printing studio. When the first thing your product says is stand back. Okay. Take it easy. Uh, add your favorite characters and scenes from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, to create your own cards, calendars, and writing paper. Got a lot of printable goodies there. Electronic goodies. That's kind of what I'm into. The video clips, the desktop theme and Winamp skin, and some mini games. We got some mini games. Action game and a puzzle game. Uh, I don't know if the printer's going to work. I do have a printer, you know. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Yes, I, uh, I in fact just had to print out some tax documentation and put it in a physical envelope so I can mail it to the state of California. I am an independent business owner, so of course I have a printer. Uh, but it's not that simple. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be playing Mega Man Battle Network later. Excited for that. Hashtag sponsored. Uh, I got to disclose that stuff. So here's our disc. You can see the, the little icon came up. That's good. Isn't that good? Let's, uh... I just realized I there's an email there. Freaking media servers, man. Well, it's out of the bag now. There we go. What if I just do that? There we go. Fine. Uh, yeah, good start. Good start. So if I just hit open, let's just let's just run it. Oh, you get a little disc icon. That's good. Does Battle Network come with the GBA games as well? Yes. Well, there's so there's two collections, and then there's a bundle. There's a volume one and volume two. Volume one includes, I think, uh, one, two, and three, and then volume two has uh, four, five, and six. I, uh, I don't have the the thing up right in front of me. Because I'm busy looking at Star Wars Episode Three activity. I would say it's Activity Center. <laughs> Hold on, I got I got other documents for that. Okay, they're all GBA games. I thought so. You had me you had me confused when you asked that question. You got me all confused up. Anyway, look at that. The errors in French. Isn't that cool? That's mostly what I wanted to draw attention to. 
They have well, they're not necessarily remastered. They have a uh, they have a uh, filter put over them. They can you can like up-res them basically. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll see it. Yes. Okay. They were all on Game Boy Advance. One, two, and three are in collection one. Four, five, and six are in collection two. I'm gonna look that up just to make super sure. Uh, Steam's not running. Da, da, da. One of the more interesting things about doing sponsorships now is you have to be a product guide in addition to like just doing the thing. You have to know like everything about it. It's it's almost like you're working in a retail store. Okay, yes. Volume 1 has 1, 2, and 3. Volume 2 has 4, 5, and 6. GameStop flashbacks? A little bit. It made more, like... Made more sense <laughs> than I guess. Uh, Sufficier du projection. Estaltel! Impossible du continue! Alas. So we gotta throw it back. We gotta roll it back. Yeah, Steam notifications. Isn't that fun, Brandon? Isn't that cool? I can't stop it. There's no way to turn it off. Uh, because they're, they're friend requests. I can ignore all friend requests, but then more friend requests come in, and every time you log into Steam, it shows you every single one, and there's no way to turn it off. Steam has never, ever, never, ever, ever addressed that. It's nothing that, like, it's not a problem that, that people have to address or deal with by and large, but... Yeah, suffering from success, it's true. Damn, bro. My computer might be at risk. So I can do this. Which is probably, I mean, this is a pretty accurate way to experience the Star Wars Episode 3 Activity Center, I think. Oh yeah, Escape from Horror Land. That's why I did this. Oh, and Jar Jar's Journey. Jar Jar! Boy, that was a long time ago. I have two games installed. Escape from Horrorland and Jar Jar's Journey. But I also have Swack. <laughs> Let's explore Swack. Autoplay. Yeah, Virtual Machines are the best. Yes, Battle Network Collection. You can get all six volumes, which is ten games total. Oh. Oh, there were physical Battle Network toys? Oh shit. Oh, shit. That's pretty cool. Pizza Boy Gabe, I take it you're a uh, Battle Network fan. I kind of underestimated how popular that series is in that franchise. Oh, Darth Vader! Man. Yeah, Darth Vader's cool. Here's the great part. There's another disc. Check that out. So. This is coming in hot already, but there's even more content to it. Uh, let's rip the band-aid off right away, because I'm I'm afraid that I won't be able to print any of the printable goodies. If I can like save them to a document and then maybe transfer them out of the virtual machine, but I'm not sure about print servers going through a, a virtual machine. Bookmarks! But it's just gonna be on flimsy paper. How sad is that? Those are some wicked looking bookmarks, but I'm trying to do this on like a, oh. Yeah, you need to install a printer. Eesh. This is gonna work, man. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. Hold on. Is there any kind of like print server functionality? 
出吧。Maybe you could pass through like a USB connected printer. Maybe I can pass through my Stream Deck so that I can do this inside of Windows XP. E. Use the snipping tool, but like, well, one. Yeah, it won't even let me like access the file. I could snip this and print it. That's not. I mean, it's got to be a file on the disk, so I'm sure that. Oh, you could just like, oh, print out a whole calendar. You can mix and match your imagery. Come on, I gotta throw this into full screen. Control print screen and that. That's just that's just taking what's on the screen. That's nothing. So wait, you want me to like? You're just saying to print this, which yeah, I can do, but there's no magic there. There. Where's the magic? This is gonna look like crap. Oh wait, no. Did I? Str oh, I hope I. Also, I'm low on ink. Um. It's not, it's not bad, really. I did get the mouse cursor in there, though. <laughs> anyway, now I know uh, where I'll be in January, February 2012. I don't know if the movie, I don't know if the movie 2012 came out around then. Uh, but somewhat legible. I suppose this could this could be used as an actual calendar. That's good. We're off to a good start here. Yeah, the cursor being... <laughs> the cursor is what really brings it together. Game tags. Oh! Oh, for like a party? Oh, man. Oh, they're so small, though. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, well, I got to print that out. That's cool. That Chewbacca one is dope, though. That's pretty cool. These are all right. Although, imagining them through like a crappy inkjet printer in 2005 is not, not doing it any favors. Yeah, here's the... <laughs> oh, what this is so bad! Uh, but hold on. Maybe I can... Maybe I can I can hack the file structure. Just put you there. Remind me what I'm doing it for. What? Oh oh no! I'm not trying to launch. Oh come on. Oh, there we go. Goodies. Huh. Oh, there's a screensaver. Yeah, okay. They're just in a, a shockwave file. That's interesting. Posters. All of this imagery is locked away. All right, well, whatever. No problem. Encoded deep within the Adobe's coffers.
I don't know if I don't know if upscaling through Photoshop before printing is going to be the way to do it. But I'll see. <laughs> I think you can see his people eyes. You've got to save every last pixel that you can. They are treasured resources. Every pixel is a non-renewable resource of Chewbacca. <laughs> Look at his eyes, though. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the simple things. How cool would this look on the side of a van or something? Man, it's like Art Nouveau style. Okay. Chewbacca. I usually, I like nearest neighbor because it keeps it all pixelated. Hard edges. That's what I want. That's the look I'm going for. Yes. <laughs> I'm curious to print this because I'm wondering how the pixelation will look. All right. This is going to wreck my ink. Slap that bad boy on the side of your PC case. I'm going to try. It's too big, though. It's it's a beautiful piece. If it were one of the foundational pieces, I would be all for it. Yeah, I can trim the sides. Print. The printer needs attention. PS5 cover art. Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased, pleased to announce Chewbacca from Insomniac Games. All right, let's go see. issues in my printer are becoming a little more exaggerated but that's okay I still feel like it actually achieves its intended intended emotional punch now that it's in the real world you can kind of see the pixelization too which is extra weird with the banding yeah it's enhanced actually somehow the the like green streaks make it even more dank it's like it's like a hologram yeah It's just like he's, he's looking at you. <laughs> What's fun is I can see it like through the uh, the back of the page with the light shining through it. So it's like he's looking at me too while he's looking at you. Uh, wait, hold on. There we go. You're correct though. Oh! Chewbacca doesn't want to stand up. He's too restless. Uh, where do I put him? I'll slide him back here. I think I'm going to put him on the fridge and see what see how Steph reacts when she comes home. Uh, yeah, I can put that in the Discord. No problem. What the heck? Come on. Uh, so this is this is just a extremely high resolution. Well, I guess it's not that's weird. It's only 612 by 899, huh? Well, whatever. Oh yeah, gaming. Gaming. <laughs> Here. Uh, let me drop that in there. 
gonna put it in general, I guess. <laughs> All right, this is going very well. I do. I yeah. Let me send that to Jacob. Also, let me just let me just text that right on to Jacob now that I've exported it. I think I might have interrupted a conversation in there, but that's fine. Select attachments. Chewbacca.png. Send via MMS. Fearless Nomad? Oh shit, thanks for gifting five subs. I like how this, this music is still going for it. Thank you very much, happy Friday. Now the stickers. This is what we need to get on the side of it. How is this even supposed to work? What's even the implication here? Oh my god, look at that shit. Look at that logo. That's sick as hell, though. It's Yoda. How are we supposed to print this off? I guess, no, I guess they did have, like, adhesive, like, inkjet paper. This could work. This is an interesting style. Very, like... Like 80s hip hop. So cool. Writing papers. Oh, now this is absurd. This like gradient of ink across an entire piece of paper. So you print this off on like a, a piece of printer paper and then you write on it as stationary. Yeah, actually, the ink might make it like really crisp. Holy crap, though. Print that Yoda on some rolling papers? Oh, shit. Smoking that Chief Geef. That Kermit. That Je Jedi Master. I think I looked at all these. Are you winning? I am winning. Hey, you... You look at this and tell me if I'm winning or not. Wait, what's, oh, he's kind of turning his head the other way. One hour left in my 16-hour shift. And back at it eight hours later. Ugh. Damn. So you have to, like... You get just enough time to sleep, huh? You're not giving me the cold shoulder, are you? I would never. Old time Chalky. Thank you for the cheer. Oh no! I do want to install Adobe Acrobat on my computer. Uh oh. NetOp Systems FIAD Optimizer is running. <laughs> do whatever you want, Adobe. Oh. Oh. It's pretty cool that it can still play music while it's installing Adobe Acrobat. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest version you have, please. <laughs> Give me the spiciest bugs. And now Adobe Acrobat will spring to life. I accept. That actually worked. Weird. This was back when Adobe Acrobat wasn't bloated piece of shit. No, it was always that. I don't know what I'm saying. It was always that. No, I don't want to see this. These spoilers. This is fucking spoilers. I thought there might be like pictures in here or something. No? Contact us by web mail. God. Dweebs. I guess it was worth it for to see web mail. Alright, back. I've seen all the printable goodies. I'm rich with printable goodies. Yeah, here we go. Electronic goodies. This is the real juice. Screensaver. Fuck yes. Install. Yes, it's okay. Installed. Let's... Yes! 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 Settings. Oh. What? Mm. <laughs> it just pops up a screen that says Star Wars Episode 3. 
You want to see some settings? I got you, pal. No, don't show it. Uh, hold on. Quit. Here's your sentence. All right. All right. All right. It's episode three screensaver time. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little fast, huh? Wow. Cool. He has two capes. I didn't, I never knew it. Cool, cool. I, I, yeah, I guess I should have left the music running. And he's like, eh, I can't see. Do we have to do this facing the sun? Eh. All right. Cool. And it starts over. Okay. Master. Yeah, he's got like he's got like a big cape and then another waist cape. He's got two capes, man. Who needs two capes? This is the opulence of the Empire. All right. That's pretty sick. That is but the first of an, a parade of electronic goodies. Oh, do you think that this... Do you think it's going to have... If it has a Winamp skin, surely it's going to have an installer for Winamp. It must. Because how else am I going to use the skin? I should have thought about that. <laughs> one for the bitches and one for the hoes. <laughs> Always got something to cape twirl. <laughs> Winamp skin! Oh! That's so sick. It's all. Uh, okay. Desktop. Oh, definitely the red version. So. I should have read that. Oh. Yes, sick. Sick. Ah. Oh, it did. <laughs> Dark hand. Thanks for the prime. What? That actually ma that made Chewbacca move. That sound because Chewbacca's next to the speaker. So it made Chewbacca like <laughs> <laughs> He's actually in front of the subwoofer, so when it made the wom wom, it actually made him jiggle. What a perfect day. Oh man, we got some sweet wallpapers here. You think that Chewbacca one's gonna pop up? That'd be cool. So three video documents. Teaser trailer nostalgia. Alright. <laughs> this is making me nostalgic for when I was like locked in the closet or something? In the punishment basement? Huh. Hmm. My excitement levels were clearly getting too high. I accept that now. E. Yeah. Oop. Oh! Oh, wait, was... That might have just been the sound. Oh. 
Is there a way to send like control delete or something? Let me see. Uh oh. I didn't do anything. All right, let's 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 throw her in reverse. Let's uh just had to lean over and hit that old reset button. Do happens to everybody. Every droid's got to reboot every now and then. There we go. Where's the recycle bin in the middle of the day? Why does that always happen, man? So what? Great. Start menu that's doing that? What was that sound coming from? Oh! Why does it just do that? It's not just the... Uh. Alright. Alright, it's fine. This is normal. Uh, My computer, it's a little Yoda. I might need to just explore and like try to play the... Play, play the videos separately. Why does it keep doing that? Do I try to just play the video again? Maybe all the... All the hubbub of installing all the themes and stuff really threw it off. and making up. I want to see these so bad. Come on, Bink video. That was faster. I hear this. I hear the CD twirling. <laughs> Snack pack, thanks for the sub. Writes bink quality, or bink means quality gaming. I used to think that. I'd see that bink logo and be like, all right. Gonna have some good compression on these cutscenes. Now it just means that the video won't play. Damn. Jar Jar Bink video. Indeed. Indeed, sweeper. Well said. All right. Throw it in reverse. Back it up. Uh... Yeah, I'm hoping I can just maybe yank these files off the disk. Because there was like a folder that just said video. But if it's Bink video, crap. <sighs> maybe I can download like a Bink video player or something for Windows XP. Maybe CCCP would do it? Or like... Maybe if I yank it across the network. <laughs> Those fucking sounds, dude. I can't. Yeah, it's just a bunch of bink files. Bink play. Yeah, VLC might work. If they still have the XP version up. I don't know if it's just gonna pass through networking. Oh no. Fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> How am I going to get? Let's see here. Oh, VLC works on XP, XP, SP3 and above. Okay, so I have to figure out a way to get an uh, XP installer 
Or is it the same installer, like a 32-bit installer onto this? I think you can do USB pass-through. I could use a thumb drive. Is there another way to do it? Yeah, this is the real game here. God, does it have to be like FAT32 to be re readable on Windows, though? Oh, shared folder. Okay. Hmm. Do I have to like reload Windows for it to pop up? I wonder. I don't think that's what that means, actually. I think it might be a... Uh... Wait, what? Transient folder? Wait, hold on. Auto mount. Yeah, maybe this is what it was. What it is. Maybe the auto mount just wasn't turned on. Uh. Maybe if I boot it with the shared folder turned on. Explore, you can go in. Fuck yeah. Really likes. I guess I can turn that window off, but I'm afraid I'll forget. <laughs> no shared folder. Yeah, I knew I knew it couldn't be that easy. Well, let's see. So I'm not showing up in here. Hold on. What's on that one? Okay, that seems normal. So, uh, SanDisk Cruiser Glide. Oh! Is it gonna be able to mount it? Oh! Oh! It's trying. Oh, 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 it showed up for like a split second. Oh, cool, great, okay. 
stop. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Okay, here we go. There's that. Uh, now we're in business. Win 32, paste it to there. Deedle, 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 deedle. Watch it be just be like, you can't install that. <laughs> as soon as I, as soon as I plug it in, you can't do that. Hey, nice work. You can't do that. How come that wasn't a Star Wars sound? That was just a doo-doo. Stupid. You can't do that. Here we go. VLC fixes everything. Fuck yes, fuck yes. Look at this, it's working. Why does it keep making the lightsaber sound? <laughs> So annoying, dude. Okay. All right. <laughs> Why not? It's it's a fair point. Shoo, 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 shoo. Let's see here. US. I'm going to guess that it's just like one big video that has... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yes. Hacked. Completely hacked. Is there any sound? Oh, there's sound. Oh, this is the nostalgia trailer. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the old Republic before yeah. the dark times. The pristine double letter before box. the Empire. A young Jedi named Darth Vader. The 2000s the were a confused time. turned to evil. Helped the Empire hunt down and destroy the Jedi Knights. Vader was seduced by the dark side of the Force. Lord Vader. I don't think that shot was in episode three. Yes, Master. Right. It's like not a cool pose for Darth Vader. That was a good trailer. Two thousand five. I guess this is the other trailer? Yeah, it must be. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. The Council wants you to report on all the Chancellor's dealings. That's treason. We are at war, Anakin. Very dangerous putting them together. I don't think the boy can handle it. I don't trust him. I need your help, son. I'm appointing you to be my personal representative on the Jedi Council. You're on this Council, but we do not grant you the rank of Master. What? Obi-Wan and the Council don't trust me. Learn to know the dark side of the Force, and you will achieve a power greater than any Jedi. You're under arrest, Chancellor. Are you threatening me, Master Jedi? This is making Chewbacca dance a little bit.
Every single Jedi is now an enemy of the Republic. Do what must be done. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy. Who could have done this? Twisted by the dark side, young Skywalker has become. I feel so helpless. <laughs> One. Trailer makes the, <laughs> that makes the movie look really good. It was the best of the prequels, right? Most people seem to agree with that. All right. This is FR and SP. I'm going to guess that that's French and Spanish, but maybe not. Let's see what FR is. Yeah, French version of the trailer. Yeah. Pendant des centaines de générations, l'ordre de Jedi a su défendre et garder la paix et la justice dans l'ancienne république, bien avant les jours sombres. What is uh Lord Vader? What what does uh Spanish Obi Wan sound like? El lado oscuro de la fuerza es el camino a muchas capacidades que muchos consideran algo antinaturales. Y es posible adquirir ese poder. Nunca lo obtendrás de un Jedi. El consejo quiere que le informe sobre las actividades del canal. I'm guessing maybe all the. <laughs> Whoa! There were a ton of special features though. Where are those hidden? Hold on, hold on. That's too good. <laughs> I gotta get the like last frame. Here we go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Okay, I got to send this to Jacob now too. Okay. It should be your thumbnail when I put this on YouTube. I can send it to uh I can send it to Chelsea. Fitting. All right. Let's get back in it. I'm going to guess these are some like well, would bonus features have been out by then, DVD? No, probably not. Too evil. Twisted by the dark side, young Skywalker has become. Hayden is very good at doing the dark side, and he always has been. I chose an actor who has that presence of the dark side to work with, as opposed to somebody who's very lighthearted and funny, and trying to get him to have an undercurrent of dark side all the time. Sounds an awful lot like a dictatorship. Well, if it works, 
the transition into the dark side was a lot of fun because it, it, it was where I was wanting to go from the very get-go. And I wasn't really sure at the time why I was being asked to pull back, but now I understand it's because it, you know, it has to take place at very specific points in this film. There's always this good in you yeah. at this point. Yeah. The good part is saying, what am I doing? And the bad part is saying, I'm doing this for Padme, I'm doing this for us, and we can be, we can, it'll be better for the universe, it'll be better for everybody. Yeah, you know, but there's always this little part in you. Saying, I love, love, love any footage of I George doing? directing. Where we left him in episode two, consumed by conflicting emotions, his love for Padme, a lust for power, which was really magnified by his mother's death, and a fear, which is important, a fear that such an occurrence could happen again. As a very wise man once said, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And that, more or less, is the nature of Anakin's descent to the dark side. The climax is episode three, where he actually does turn into Darth Vader. He actually becomes the evil he has been trying to fight. And it's a fun story to tell, uh, because it is the story of how a good person turns bad. <laughs> He's grown in this whole war, but he's kind of grown kind of in the wrong direction. He kind of likes killing everybody, so it's... This dude has, like, I'm yeah, looking at George Lucas smile. Very like, un-Jedi-like. You know, when I, when I was talking to Hayden, uh, the first thing that came up is the fact that I've been asking him to, to bulk up and the character get to where he is in dude, episode fuck big. Uh, Get jacked, Hayden. Start working out. Let me see you in the gym. He came eight weeks before. We took care mostly of Hell yeah. cardiovascular, so he'd be in here four hours a day sword fighting. He'd then spend two hours a day in the gym. A lot of time spent, you know, under a bench press and, and with Nick holding a, a lightsaber, having too much fun. Good. Might not be a bad idea to just, just stop from a static place and just do the... If you want, I want to... So you yeah. can get it even more precise. I think we've been really lucky with Hayden. When he started on Attack of the Clones, it could have been any young actor on Earth that was going to play that part. And now, three or four years on, boy, am I glad it was Hayden. It's just a hell of a lot of fun. I've noticed people like Learning circulating more footage of and how your body's meant to move. And the actual ridiculous shit Hayden Christensen was up to. to. Absorb all the information that's being thrown at you while retaining everything that you learned the day before and the day before that and the day before that and to piece it all together so that the fighting moves become a sort of linear continuum. That's some of the most fun I can remember having in recent memory was just being there with Nick and you and, and uh, bashing it out. That was good. Yeah. Good. Man. I just couldn't get anyone better. I think he's the best sword fighter actor or stuntman or sword fighter he's the best i've ever seen i think he's one of the most amazing actors of his generation and uh, i think we're going to be seeing a, a whole lot more of him i'm overwhelmed but the council elects its own members it's always exciting for an older actor to work with a younger actor. maybe hayden christensen will have a late game glow up like uh it would be quite as exciting as it's turned brendan frazier and we just on certain scenes we thought we were really really cooking is it possible to learn this power not from a Jedi. You're on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? There's a very interesting look sometimes that he has that Jake used to have, but he would always look and be like, wow, that is so cool. And then the look of, hmm, what does that have to do with me? And as his eyes changed, there was this thing that happened in his forehead that was like so interesting as I was watching it. It was a very good moment for him. It's been an amazing process watching Hayden play this character and approach this character. He's an incredibly soulful, deep-reaching actor. And cut. Great. Can we do it one more time, though? One more time? Please. All right. Thank that you. was very good, though. Very good. I adore Hayden uh, to death. I mean, he's there's just absolutely nothing that he won't do. Uh, he is one of the hardest-working actors. He's always there. There's no subtext to him at all. I mean, anything bothering him, he comes straight up and tells you, and then you can just deal with it. The Chancellor. No, can't do it. What I've enjoyed specifically is that we've created a relationship on screen that, that mirrors our relationship off screen and that we both get on terribly well. But we've made a bond and a real <laughs> friendship there so that there is something important that's lost.
having Hayden finally make it into the suit completes the circle of the movie, so that's satisfying. There is that mystery there. He is a man behind a mask. And up until now, we didn't know who that man was. This was sort of the moment that I've been waiting for, getting to make that final transition and dome the dark helmet and put the whole costume on. And so that was very exciting for me. You know, I all of a sudden felt very connected to, you know, this character that's been so prominently embedded in popular culture that uh, Darth, as much as it is mine, it's, it's, it's not really. You know, I, I can pretend. That was very cool. Damn. <laughs> well edited, well told. Uh, cool stuff. Uh, was Were those the only... Vi maybe the other videos are on the other disc or something. What's up? What's up, Dolly to great? How you doing? I guess it was cool he got to come back and play the role in Kenobi again. Why didn't they have another badass fucking sword fight, man? It feels like there's so much expertise and talent. I mean, the, the sword fight in episode three is good. Uh, it's, it's actually, I mean, it's quite good. It's very good. It almost feels like you wish they could have savored it more. The way that John Wick will, like, savor a stunt sequence. The, the episode three sword fight was somewhat... Like, it just, it just kept moving on. Like, it had... It definitely was like, we gotta get this... We gotta get this movie going. Yeah, Kenobi was big garbo. I agree, but... It wasn't for me. It was, in my opinion, one of the lower-ranking Star Wars things. Like... Not quite holiday special, not quite like Clone Wars movie, but not, not good. Just for me. That's just, some people like it, it's fine. So let's see here. What else was there? Becoming Obi-Wan, okay. Creating General Grievous. Okay, yeah, all these are CD2. Great, 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 great. That means I'll still be able to watch them. I was worried that there weren't more there. Alright, mini games. I guess CD2 is just gonna be a ton of fucking a ton of uh, making up features. Exit the mini game to return to the. Okay. All right. Aha! Okay, it's a match three. Cool. Let's <laughs> tell that picture of Chewbacca. Was this the puzzle game or the action game? I'm gonna guess this is the puzzle game. Oh, Yokai Shea, yes. This is Star Wars Episode 3 uh, for the PC, which is to say the Ubisoft developed Star Wars Episode 3 Activity Center that features printouts. Uh, and fun activities, like behind the scenes content. I can print out my own calendar. So now I know what's going to happen in 2012. It's a arbitrary, weird arbitrary date. Uh, and then I also made this cool printout of Chewbacca. You can see because it says Chewbacca right there. The boops and the sweeps and the creeps are drowning you out. It's okay. It's probably actually playing through my speakers into the room too loud, back into the microphone. <laughs> Hint. Oh. Exit. All right, let's play the other game. Shooting game. I'm ready. Oh, sick. Oh. Yes! Action!
Big one. Oh. Oh, I'm dead. Like 18 different music tracks at the same time. What the f <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I think I've seen everything there is to see on disc one. <laughs> let's, uh, let's swap it out. Uh, yeah, I wanna I wanna play the DS version. I well uh, the episode three game, because I don't know if the Game Boy Advance and DS versions are two distinct games or if the DS version is the GBA version, but like way cooler. I'll have to look into that. Okay. Let's load it up. Yeah. Single click. There we go. Jesus Christ, all these sounds. The fuck? Uh oh. Wait, that's weird. It, what? It recognized it outside of the virtual PC. Hmm. Wonder if there's a way to refresh. Please insert a disk. There it goes. Okay. Heading out to play some golf? All right, Adagon. You enjoy. Hopefully you have some nice games. Enjoy the outside. I went for a little walk before the stream today. It was great. Weather outside is perfect right now. Do you think the Disc 2 intro is going to be any different? Find out. It's not like this has been DMC claimed enough already. It's 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside of New Jersey. Eesh. That's a little balmy. That's a little sweaty. It's snowing? Oh. Interesting. There, a chunk. Are there different printable goodies on the second disc? No. They do appear to be the same printable goodies. I only want postcards with Chewbacca on them. There's our guy. Are there different games? There are not. Right. So it's really just the videos. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah, the Winamps. Probably not a different Winamps game either. All right, well, screw it. Time to just, uh, time to just hack it open here. Crack it open like an egg.
These are all pretty long. Hold on. This is just gonna be like... Good morning, Mr. McGregor. Morning. Oh my gosh. I have to watch this though, but this is like, how long is this? That's a long time. It's like 30 minutes. Mr. Lucas, the first movie I ever saw in the cinema could possibly have been Star Wars Episode possibly. 4. All right, well, 30 minutes of Episode 3 bonus features, I guess. And I went to see it with my brother and we were going to see it mainly because my uncle was in it. My mum's brother. What? Played, um, Wedge. What? Four, five, and six. Good shot, Red. No shit! And then we sat down, just excited to see Uncle Dennis. Look at the size of that thing. And then we got Star Wars as well. The deep lore! Really Holy fuck! Great. That's cool. No, I had no idea, Brandon. First That's cool. Into a larger world. You and came with it with such a... Um, uh, such a great degree of enthusiasm. Like a kid in the candy. I've been waiting for this for weeks. I've been thinking... Every morning I say, I wonder if it's today I'll get to choose. Oh. <laughs> We'd never see you with the same commitment that he gave. So we were thrilled. Are you and McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi. I'm George. I'm responsible for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> First criteria That's for our George. casting Obi Wan Kenobi was somebody who was Love you, complimentary to Alec Guinness, but not just sort of copy it, but create a, an addition to that character. Where are you going, Master? For a drink. Because he is younger, he's in a completely different place, and he's a very active Jedi, so I needed somebody very physical. Somebody who was a fantastic actor. No. And who could pick up the mannerisms and the essence of uh, the Alec in his performance. So this was like a dream come true to him, to see the final, you know, circle of this his early life. I guess, sorry to, I don't want to talk over it, but it just occurred to me that in period you were noticing the nervous laughter in the room. If there's one thing I really, really enjoy seeing, and this is part of like seeing Lucas direct, is really seeing anyone who like everyone knows and everyone knows is powerful and they're within their own sphere of like total influence, seeing groups of people interact with that person. So like the, the fake smiles, the nervous laughter, just like the weird power dynamic at play, especially when that person can either doesn't care and is trying to do something normal, but the human condition won't let them. Anyway, they've come to those dynamics are really fascinating and stuff like this. We're like, there's a fandom that draws people to it, and they're aware of it and part of it. And then also to be that close to the actual, the mundane humans that are making the things every day, and to do the daily work on it. It's just like it's just such a weird energy that's really fun to observe. Net. Cool, I used to fantasize about things like this as a kid. Yeah, I'm, huh? In the original three. Alec Guinness was only in the first half of the first movie. He cropped up now and again as a shadowy blue guy. But we only saw him for half a film, and, and yet he created this iconic figure that, that I've grown up knowing. It was do what you wearing a rush right? shirt. Of course. And now to have you and McGregor just doing the nuances of Alec as a, as a young man, the charm and the wit and the eye, and, and just the gentility of the guy and the strength. You will be a Jedi, I promise. We see right from the start, from episode one, that Obi Wan is it a rush shirt? This little boy, I'm doubting Anakin's myself now. Mentor and master, and the fact that he's the disciplinarian, and he's always telling Anakin off, and Anakin's always been cheeky to him. And you know, there is a father-son, Ruka, there, which is, which is nice. And I refer to him in the end of the move, this movie, as being like brothers. You know, the first half of this film, you see an incredible bond and a real friendship there, so that there is something important that's lost. It's written in a way to be reminiscent of Alec Guinness, and it's written in a way that he becomes more and more the father figure in the series. Patience. Use the force. Think. So as it goes on, the third film, he's much more like Alec Guinness than he is in the first film. I always watch a lot of Alec Guinness before I start. I have done each time, but this time I got them to make up a loop to reel of all his scenes. But in this case, it's quite handy, because I'm that bit closer to him now. You know, than I was in episode one. I'm. This is my last shot at making it match up, making it Alec Guinness. Let go. Ooh, Sandra, thanks for the sub. 99 months. An act one on month away from the big trip. It's been more important. I think you're. I think you're going to be the first one to get a, an Alec Guinness feel and look. But this time we had to kind of match it more physically as well. 
So, um, I have done timing the adjacent, I have to amend. I, try to take, uh, I can only, I can only drop everything and play Groove Coaster. They have the same huh. here. If, uh, if I'm not in the middle of a sponsorship. They say this triangle is the most important thing and it defines your character. And on the two people, that? their characters, it's their, that triangle is exactly the same. Wow. I think my hair is quite like Alec Guinness's and it's, it's no longer a mullet, which, is, which I sported beautifully in episode two which I've now passed on to Hayden. He now carries the mullet flame, you know, through episode three. Is he wearing a big Jedi mullet? Yep. Top man. But the continuity in Alec Guinness's look is absolutely all over the place. That looks like someone else pretending to be Alec Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just swiveled. What hairpiece? Not the one. Hairpiece. Alec Guinness didn't wear a hairpiece. Sometimes his hair's here, sometimes it's down here, you know. There's not a great deal of continuity going on there. <laughs> His attempt to try and emulate a great actor who he has an enormous amount of respect for is one thing. But what he's done in the process is he's brought the greatness of that character to himself and his own performance. Hello there. Hello there. There is a phenomenon in Star Wars that was built in when I started, which is I was hiring actors uh, sometimes for 10 years, and I was hiring them very young. So I was able to use their maturity over the years as part of the character. In the case of Ewan, he starts out as a Padawan learner, and then he ends up as a very sophisticated Jedi master. And as he's grown into the part, he's gotten even better at the physical aspects of the character, you know, between the films as they grew older. Cut. Well, that was good. One of the greatest pleasures I get is, is seeing that somebody can do something, even if they don't think they can do it themselves. But I think through doing this, um, he's become way more God. physical and way more capable uh, than he ever was. And that's one of the main reasons why I do it, is seeing somebody reach their maximum potential and then go on from that. <laughs> Plus Ultra. Good. I think Ewan realizes that he, uh, on this particular set, was one of the older characters in the group, and therefore he was the big brother. He was the one that was sort of controlling the group in some cases because he had the most experience, which is very much in the nature of his character. But he would keep things lively and happy and not let people get too dragged down by the day-to-day -day oh, man. operations of the movie, which is, you know, what a big brother does. Remember that photo of him on the set? <laughs> what people made Valentine's Day cards out of it? Greatly to the performance is working with other actors. And if you can work with a good receptive actor, and a giving actor, who's on the other side of the camera, then your performance benefits greatly. And working with Ewan has been exactly like that. What you notice with Ewan is his total impact. Yeah, it's that guy. I was like, that's that guy. He's completely I've seen that guy. Goes straight into it. That's what it's all about. I still never Wait, hold on. I want to hear that again. I want to hear anything Christopher Lee has to say about performance. Oh boy, I may have thrown thrown the Bing, old Bing player for a loop here. Uh oh. Thousands of battle draws. I don't hear the disc, I don't hear the CD tray doing anything. Well, thanks. This <laughs> fucking Yoda, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh. George Lucas? Okay, I have to I have to screenshot this one though. <laughs>
It's just too good though. I may, I may not be able to, uh, I don't know, I may not be able to seek around in these videos. Here we go. Yeah, seeking might be off the table. I think Bink video might be actually like 100% linear. No, I can, I can like frame skip. Click. My CD is making like stuttering sounds. Oh yeah, I can copy them off. I can copy them locally, that would probably help. And yeah, I could bring them into Windows 11 as well. Let me do this. That way they don't have to seek from the, uh, the CD-ROM so much. Uh, what is the current wallpaper? It's an elderly lady playing Wii Sports also. Nick asked for this to get posted in Discord, so yeah, let me crop it. There we go. <laughs> Yoda 2. <laughs> All right. Where's that? Where's that? Oh, PC. Two minutes left. Okay. Well, oh, four already finished. I think Ewan realizes that he, uh, on this particular set, was one of the older characters in the group, and therefore he was the big brother. He was the one that was sort of controlling the group in some cases because he had the most experience, which is very much in the nature of his character. But he would keep things lively and happy and not let people get too dragged down by the day-to-day -day operations of the movie, which is, you know, what a big brother does. <laughs> what? also contributes greatly to the Bruce Spence is working with other actors and if you can work with a good receptive actor and a giving actor that guy who's on the other side of the camera then your performance benefits greatly and working with Ewan has been exactly like that what you notice with Ewan is his total involvement in everything that he does he's completely involved goes straight into it that's what it's all about. I've still never met anyone like right. you. And He's completely so involved. Go straight into it. That's what it's all about. Such a physical performer. He I agree, Chris Lee. Incredibly hard. I agree with that. His performance. I agree with that deep manner, which observation you just made. For a director to work with him. And I think Ewan is is right up there. I mean, he does exactly what Alec did on the first film, and he brings even something greater to the second trilogy. Yeah, not complete resentment. And, and contempt for the source material, maybe? <laughs> he brings something. Some, I'm not just here for the paycheck attitude. That is just so fresh and new. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sick. All right, moving on. Let's, let's load up this playlist, baby. I want to see that. I want to see that again. Now that I can play this buttery smooth playback. Yeah. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Hold on. If it's grievous, I got to dank up. I'll be right back. All of these films have the ultimate bad guy, which is the Emperor. But in addition to that, there's the sidekick, be him Darth Vader in episodes four, five, and six, 
Darth Maul in Episode 1, or Count Dooku in Episode 2. So we're always trying to work with a sidekick, an apprentice to the Dark Lord. <laughs> All right, what scares you, Ryan? Yeah. Alien. Death. death. The eyes, I would say most yeah. people are afraid of death. Yeah. And death, like... I, Skulls. And I, what, I think what made Alien scary was no eyes. Like teeth, but this thing no, has to act. No face. It's not. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's what was scary. Yeah. I know, Todd. I know it has to act. Yeah. It's a movie, Todd. Yeah. Everything has to act. You don't have to say that. Actually, being a droid or not being right. a droid too. So it, it could be a number of things. As long as it's scary. That's yeah. what I said. What is this music? What was this from? I. Walked around the room, I saw a lot of... This is the, like... Evil. And so I'm gonna try exactly... This is the, like, you just walked into an alien bazaar uh, soundtrack from any film in the, like, aughts. The opposite. I'm gonna try things that look really very beautiful. When I was in the bathroom... Grievous yeah, could have tits? You're looking at this uh, spray bottle from the top view, and I kind of, kind of saw a face in there, kind of like, maybe these could be the eyes, and this could be some kind of interesting mouth. And so that's a kind of, just kind of a way to to play around with it. And you could, you know, as you go, you could change things around and make things around and things evolve from there. That rules. Kind of going back to that more of a standard general kind of pose, but I'm still not satisfied with it. It's like the poster. Yeah, it does have a Age of Empires back. background music? Dude, I gotta play more Age of Empires. Age of Empires 2 Remastered came out. I've never played that, and people say it's like one of the best yeah, strategy games like ever. This, I gotta get in that shit. Understand the pose better. I can stand here and do that until I get back far enough. You know, and I can actually try out variations on it. I can put some lighting on it. I can see, you know, what's the most dramatic thing for the pose I'm trying to do. It's really embarrassing sometimes when you forget you're in a room with people and you're... How old is he there? I don't know. Eight. And maybe he doesn't have to be human. There's so many ways you could slice it. Yeah, <laughs> but I like that shape. those in in the next 45 minutes. It's zero hours. It's go time, baby. Oh my goodness. This is a foam core both vertical side by side. The walls, they are... Come on down. Cheers. That's our art department. Yeah. We're Grievous. Once again, we're creating an animated character that doesn't exist and trying to present that to George as, here's your choice of actor. Who would you want? Come in and frolic, George. Uh, anyway, if there's anything you Here we go. I'm going to be kind of careful that we don't recreate Darth Vader here since he sort of shows up at the end of the movie. Although, the ultimate... <laughs> scary guy, a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Video player, Is somebody a parent? <laughs> ones I like the most. I like these one and these one. He's got a little stamp. And I could like these. If we went. Oh, those became the guard. Some of this, like Imperial Guard. A little devilish. So it, it, it's got to be threatening. It's got to be something. I don't want to be Darth Vader like. I don't, you know. This at least you really know it's a droid. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see more, or do you want to? Man, if you got a stamp, holy shit, you'd just be like fucking swinging your dick around all week in that office. Give me more coffee. I got a stamp. Hey, what's up? I drive showers. I've been doing great. I am. Uh, I am watching through the bonus content that was included on the Star Wars Episode Three uh, Activity Center for the PC. Made by Ubisoft. Technically, it has a video game on it. It has two. I played each for about 30 seconds. Develop these. And now I'm watching like 20 minutes of bonus content. In sweet, sweet bink video. The art department team, I think I've described before, is very much like a jazz band ensemble. Where you know when it's your time for the drum solo. At the last minute, I had one little sketch I had started before for an idea for the Droid General. We had a little bit of time yet, so I just finished markering it up and I handed it over to Ryan Mendoza. And sure enough, like during the meeting, George went straight to that one and said, this is the one. 
this guy, with this as human eyes, or not human, but animal eyes, that, you know, would move around, you'd actually get to see the whites, and you get to see this, an actually organic thing, which might be really ugly. I came up with the idea of General Grievous as a leader of the droid armies. He's oh, we got some ads going on? Oh, we can't let, we can't let people miss out on the reveal, on the, on the, that's all, that's a pretty cool story. I always like those, those moments when just like, you can toil and toil and toil over something, but when it comes to like human art and creativity, it's like it's a process and you can enable it, but you just sometimes you just have to wait for inspiration. Oh, it's pretty cool stuff. You've been getting ads even as a sub. Really? I'm hearing more and more about that, or people are complaining about it more and more. That's not good. That's like the whole point you sub. Yeah, verbose. It, it did actually already have a uh, category on Twitch, believe it or not. Twitch is, uh, I haven't stumped Twitch's game list in a very long time. <laughs> George Lucas won? How could we let him do this? All right, for the sake of those who were stuck in ads, who didn't get to see the real creative birth of our baby boy, General Grievous, That'd be kind I've of rewound. Careful, we don't recreate Darth Vader here since he sort of shows up with me. Yeah, I got that Winamp skin. I don't have Winamp installed, though. Hello. I was hoping there'd be Ultimate. a Winamp installer on the disc. <laughs> Scary guy. A kid. He's a video Spoken. player. Is somebody a parent? <laughs> the ones I like the most. I like these one. A Disa one? Disa one. A Disa one. And I could like these if we went with Droid. Some of this gets a little devilish. So it, it, it's got to be threatening. It's got to be something. It, that I don't want it to be Darth Vader like. I don't, you know, this at least you really know it's a droid. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see more, or do you want to well, develop these? Well, we'll give a chance to develop these. When I mean, you can see some more, if anybody's got any ideas, I'm always open to ideas. Okay. The art department team, I think I've described before, is very much like a jazz band ensemble, where you know when it's your time for the drum solo. At the last minute, I had one little sketch I had started before for an idea for the Droid General. We had a little bit of time yet, so I just finished markering it up and I handed it over to Ryan Mendoza. And sure enough, like during the meeting, George just went straight to that one and said, the one. This guy, with this as human eyes, or not human, but animal eyes. Very 70s. You know, move around, you it's interesting. Some of those features got you know, diminished. Might be really he looks like a roller disco the bot. General Grievous as a leader of the Droid Armies. He's kind of a a little bit of an alien in a droid shell, which is sort of an echo of what Anakin is going to become. Warren's actually made the But idea. not like Darth Vader. But I don't know what it means, and I kept telling him, remember what it's no, no. like, because you're going to be telling that story for the rest of your life. The eyes really do dial in that character. I love seeing Yoda's wise face smiling down on me every time a new featurette starts. Okay. <laughs> you don't get elegant uh, fashion sizzle reels like this anymore. Three, and with an ever-expanding universe, that was a real challenge. Anytime you have a large costume epic, you have a vast amount of work that has to be done. Oh, Megami Risa, thank you very much for the sub. And yes. Trisha Bigger is just like incredible. What she has Jimmy done Smits. The costumes on, on this particular Silent hero of the Star Wars universe. Regal and noble. The rare around. space Mexican. I really think that Trish has done a phenomenal job. I mean, if you look at Padme's costumes, oh my God, the materials. I still think that, like, she's very keen to. I think Chewbacca counts. I think he qualifies. 
His name is Chewy. He's got like a little mustache. We bought fabrics in the States and New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and London. He does all the work. He's an ice cold homie. Dolly, thanks for the sub. India, really all over. Early on in the pre production phase, she does offer up these fabrics for us to look at to see how, how they best work most of the time. I mean, 99% of the time it works beautifully. One example of the uniqueness of what Trish does in terms of taking a design and then turning it into yeah, a ride shotgun. exotic reality. Like a beat up, a dress called beat up semi truck. It shifts colors <clears throat> different lighting conditions. It's woven with two different colors. So there's a brown oh. and blue through it. And I've had that fabric pleated so that with movement, the, the fabric goes between being brown and being blue and you're never quite sure. She's very always conscious of how the actor moves, how it looks on them in motion, so they look better than the original design on paper. And uh, that is really by understanding the different kinds of materials, how they work under lighting conditions, and how to come up with really exotic materials and cloth. I love this fabric. Oh yeah, man. Ugh, the Chancellor's coats. ...costume to play the character I was playing is wonderfully empowering. But uh, the, the colors, the textures, People keep coming up and say, is it rubber, is it leather? Well, it's neither rubber nor leather. I don't quite know what it is. I'm sure Tricia will describe what it is. The fabric is a, a wool with a, a latex type of material over the top, which gives a crumbling animal, creaturey sort of feel to sort of show the sort of inner decay of his character. Huh. Feels reptilian, which is so people go, oh, and that, that's exactly, exactly right. It looks cool, all that. Yeah, does it? It's yeah. Cool. In many cases in the film, the actors are working in a blue environment. So the only thing they huh. have that is a clue to that environment that they're working with is their costume. It's very, very important for the actors to have something that they, they can actually hold on to. And that's one of the Most characters look like they had furniture upholstery. Work so well yeah, it's, it it's weird. It makes it solid for them. I guess my costume was my first way into the character there's certain there's certain thematic very strong thematic decisions about the prequels that make sense but maybe don't don't add up into something greater so for me one of the things one of the things that clicked about the prequels eventually is that they're trying to be like like classic cinema so it's a costume epic like like george said so it's pristine actors on pristine sets not doing much just looking pretty and delivering their lines so the the costuming yeah they have they're wearing all these ornate things and just kind of like standing there as opposed to something like like lord of the rings or peter jackson's lord of the rings where everything was so lived in and like in its environment uh the prequels by the by the like restrictions of how they shot those films and also by the I, th I think that led to the the more cinematic homages that those movies tried to make. Uh, because they were shooting on pristine sets, then they tried to emulate the grandeur of of like older films like that. Uh, and you know, I think I think the the manner of the storytelling kind of throws back to that too. It's a story of like the aristocracy. It's kind of gone with the windy. Um, betrayal uh temptation downfall but it's all like has to do with the wealthy elite you know the the political political turmoil as, as opposed to the uh an uprising or everyday folks anyway gunny thank you for the sub so uh yeah the when it comes to the costuming and the, like the, the characters just seem like they've had drapes thrown on them. And they look really cool, but they're just kind of there. I don't know. To me, that's... A huge contribution to my character, in a way. Because it, it's one I of guess those it's because it's, it's that kind of movie? Adds, adds to things. And adds to things up here, too. I felt almost priest-like when it was on. And I thought, well, okay, I'm the administrator of this planet. But that role carries extra responsibilities. Especially when I'm in this costume that has been accumulated... Over eons, the significance of all these little pieces go back, have evolved over many, many years. And so it kind of was special in that aspect to me. The way he 
he moved in the costume was incredible watching him transform from just being something uh, very stark walking something away, i always see when i watch that mm. you felt as if his whole body had sort of lengthened and narrowed um, into the costume i don't know i just i just watched babylon we wanted to copy that into the costume thinking about movies a lot vertical look to the costume i really loved babylon by the way i didn't expect to to work with so many different characters and so many different environments. It's like a. Trisha, it's delicious. like if the Coens had even less restraint. Different costumes. She brings such a passion to her work that it really. Is if the Coens could really bring themselves to do full-chested dick and fart jokes, it would be Babylon. She's a very positive force on the set, and she's the best I've ever seen. Really. And at the same time, she's a dream to work with. Is it on streaming? Uh, it hit Amazon Prime for me. Prime Video. That's where I watched it. Also, holy shit, man. How is Margot Robbie so talented? How? I don't get it. It's, it's astounding. It's very exciting to think that there's an entire performance career that we'll get to watch. Holy fuck. It just takes my breath away sometimes. I saw her in I, Tanya, and I was like, fuck, well, okay, that's it. She's a genius. Home sweet home. On the picture, our communications are so and then in, in, between the various fucking, departments. In Babylon, she's just incredible. That I can travel really from San Francisco and end up in Sydney the next day, and I know everything that's been going on. And I've seen the sets, I know everything, so there's no surprises. I just walk on, it's like I've been there the whole time. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> What's great is when he finally arrives, we're in pew, one pew. world trying to link two basic films. We have to deal with episode three, but much more importantly, in a lot of ways, we have to make sure that everything that we're doing in three rings true for episode four. Well, is this the one that is given to that's Luke? It. That's the one that's given to Luke, yes. Yeah, so this is the one that Obi-Wan takes. Yes. He right. takes it with him after that fight. Yes. And th is this the one he had in the last picture? Yes. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, that's basically the way it works. We just have to go from you and to Alec. Okay, great. Yeah, the ostentatious cloth outfits play into the decadence of the Republic in the We're prequels. Non-functional but pretty. Uh huh. It. This isn't Chewbacca, I don't think. This from from a viewer's perspective, it does make them seem like distant, far away, and unrelatable. Funny because when we first did it, there's our guy. He was the tallest guy we could find in England. Yeah. You know, now, I mean. Yeah. Go to any basketball team and they start at seven foot six. Even the look of the tech, especially in episode one, it's like all sleek and shiny and clean. Especially in the last week was to really define exactly how Obi Wan and and Anakin. Yeah, Chewbacca. Were. I wanted to take Obi Wan uh, from being a <laughs> Jedi to being a much more mature and. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like. Reminiscent of. Just, just also in terms of its its pop culture references, it was kind of like 50s sci-fi. If original trilogy was 70s sci-fi, then the prequels are kind of like 50s sci-fi. Maybe getting into the and the 60s as it goes, but just like really clean, shiny, chromed out spaceships. I think that looks great. Fantastic. I wanted to take Anakin from being a young Padawan learner. Stories about space to, princesses. You know, being this really intense Jedi. Is that a 50s thing? Oh. It feels a little pretty. That's what I mean. Yeah. It looks a little... It needs to be loosened up a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. We can't let it be cute. It's got to look rugged. Yeah. <laughs> Always got to look rugged. It was just too soft, I think. Yeah. And Hayden actually wasn't very comfortable, which really is the main point because if he doesn't feel comfortable, Star in Wars character, must have dumb Flash Gordon shit going on. It's the rules. So we actually yeah. Well, I guess that's that's what makes Last Jedi so interesting. It's the definitive anti-Flash Gordon everything. What if you went down a checklist of Flash Gordon tropes and inverted them all, and then somehow tried to make that a movie? It's really cool. Yeah, it's like building a bridge and just connecting. What they've done on either side. I realized and, and uh, it's actually great. Together. Like Ryan Johnson has truly found his niche because whodunits are the kind of movie where you have to be smarter than the audience. You're supposed to be. And, it, and it's everyone's happy when you're smarter than the audience because they're asked to kind of be part of it. They're asked to to feel smart with you as opposed to you dropping some kind of dumb meta plot idea on them and them feeling... Until Enjoyed. we start putting it on his body, we just don't know exactly what's going to happen. But we know that George wants to keep the scale the same. So this is a relatively early night for us because normally 
we finish much later. But we're actually... You know what's weird? Uh... I remember watching the the DVD features on episode three, and one of the few things that I retained was that they were very excited that the Darth Vader helmet could be fully symmetric, like perfectly symmetric. Uh, so I don't know if that's this, but it'd be weird if that's all I retained. You think people ever ease up on Last Jedi? <sighs> yeah. I mean, uh, pop culture annoyances fade in time, and the good things tend to remain. And I, there are good things about it. I think the meta aspects and the commentary aspects will, like, people will write articles defending it, and that's where it'll end. I don't think, I don't think a narrative like that will ever be popular. Um, but that is kind of also the point. It was, it was proudly saying that it wasn't trying to be popular. I guess if you, if you really like, if you really lean into it. So I don't know. In my mind, best case scenario is most people forget it exists. I think I think there will be... People will discover it in the future and find it curious, I think. Maybe. With with zero investment in, in needing the brand to be good or valuable or re resurrect any childhood memories. With all that baggage removed, I think people will find it interesting. Maybe. It won't be entertaining, but interesting in good form because we've been working so hard that we're ready to shoot now. One week to go. So a script. More than Don't you like it? It's a script. I know, it's nice. Look. Mm. You've got, oh, look, I even got, you know, mine even came in a folder this time. Oh, very, yeah, very see, flashy. After all that fuss. Yeah. Is this one all away. outdoors? Is this, the, uh, this is outdoors. It's a whole outdoor area. Well, I mean, you can see this side is not finished, but that's indoors. This is outdoors. Okay. Okay. okay, let's try it once. You'll be coming... Simultaneously, when George is rehearsing the dramatic scenes, he also, at the end of each day, has to go in and then work uh, with both Ewan and Hayden in the stunt rehearsals. The guys would get so into it, and this would go on for hours and hours every day. This is awesome. This is what I want to see. see two best friends fight hand-to-hand -hand combat with each other, especially when you know that Anakin will kill Obi-Wan. Very, very powerful. Playing it against yeah. the way you... Yeah. Just go Anakin. Yeah, There's always something Anakin. really exciting about the start of shooting. Everybody's so focused. The energy is really high. Especially when it's a film and everybody... Yeah, it's... Uh, I agree, though. In retrospect, at least Episode Eight was trying something. Here we go again. And I think that's respectable. Yeah, that's fine. Even, if, even if I don't think it did maybe what it was trying to do or don't, don't even agree with what it was trying to do, I can still respect the attempt. But Episode Nine was the... The most spineless, like, nonsensical. I, in some ways, it like, it is that it is that flight of fancy, co over overproduced cocaine, eighties explosion that I profess to have a fondness for. But somehow it's just soulless. Somehow it doesn't even have the doesn't even have the cocaine soul. It's a coked out movie without the coke. Somehow. We almost lost you. We had a hard time getting the image, but we got it. We got you. Oh, hold on. We just had Rick coming up the stairs. How'd you lose him? Don't know. He's stuck in the traffic. He's stuck in traffic. <laughs> There's the Rick Meister. Oh, yeah. So should we jump straight in? Let's. Yep. Yeah. We put these videos Miranda. in media tech. That's not With, a. Um, which is sort of a bad idea. Inside. We were just wondering. How exposed that is in terms They're a bit of slow. any aging or, or weathering or anything. But the further or... you go back into it, the less distressed it is. Okay, fine. We have our sort of the, the two prongs of the art. <coughs> we have the um, the Australian art department, which is the sort of, in a sense, the filmmaking side. Of yeah, it. Zach, I agree. Episode, episode nine is actual nonsense, which is weird because a lot of Star Wars is nonsense. But there's just enough like. Uh, human down connective down. tissue there just enough feeling to make it work down in Australia building this set. but episode nine is is like uh, literal just a, a pretty ongoing relationship all the somebody time. had a dream I guess oh there's his stamp again directly through to us by video conferencing maybe two or three times a week force dyad like yeah why would you introduce <laughs> massive new confusing things that have like 
God, help me. Unknown implications in the last like 15 minutes of the end of a trilogy. Making department, and it's just been set up. Bear in mind, it's probably about a week old. I've never been more uncomfortable than I was in a movie than at the end of episode nine when they kiss. I couldn't believe it. I was squirming in my chair. I was like actually holding my breath. So in a way, it is impressive that episode nine elicited that reaction from me. I've never been that uncomfortable. Focusing themselves on what little information we get each week, which happens to be enough for us right But yeah, Benoit Blanc, I agree, nine is cowardly. I mean, eight kind of set it up, unfortunately. Eight volunteered it to be brave, and it, and it chose the least brave thing. We're heading for a destination that we're not sure where we're going to end up, but it's a, it's a good. People minute. laughed in my theater. I I wanted to cry out, and I was worried I was about to. It's I was going to be, be like, no. To do this fight in there, but hey, Nick has to have something to do. <laughs> George usually gives me sort of free reign with the fights. I mean, he oversees everything, but yeah, that's the thing though. Eight like set it up for failure. Yeah, so what we usually do is. Or uh, it set it like forced the hand, which again I appreciate. That's what I respect about it. It's it's one thing to be like templated pop media fucking sucks, am I right? And then package that in a templated pop media container. Then you're just commodifying uh, commodifying change. But if you make a movie about not following patterns and then you end it in a way that absolutely prevents the next movie from following any kind of pattern, okay. Again, may not agree with what you did, but you did it, flight. and you didn't. You didn't like back off either. I want to do with, with Obi Wan. You threw the match over your shoulder, and I like that. Between where he is there. So in a way, the narrative of the the post or whatever really the sequels all around here, completely trim. ends up having like a good and meta story. Oh no, the hairs, yeah. It's like, really high for yeah, yeah, yeah. Just about the like artistic rise and fall of it, I guess. Watches down I don't know if there was ever a rise, but. Right here. Just that often with hair whitener, it always looks like hair whitener. Uh huh. Because yeah. this is only two years. I, I, it's only two years after the, the last one. Last one, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's obviously been a hell of a two years. Look at the same now. Anakin, we have to deal with too. At this point, I think we. Brian Johnson intentionally sabotaged episode eight. Oh no. Bulking him up. He potentially sabotaged episode nine. <laughs> Hayden's had to work out really hard, so he'll do six hours sword fighting. He basically forced two hours of training whoever was going to make the next one six times into time. picking up the piece. I think it's Jesus. too much. <laughs> yeah. well, into like collecting those pieces into an audience satisfying ending, because Lord knows Last Jedi didn't bother itself with delivering an audience satisfying ending. So it took all the liberties of being a, a, a middle movie. His hair is still and and provided very little. Two days ago, it was quite long. Paid it forward very little, which is a kind of a bummer because Abrams Abrams left a lot of fun hooks in Episode Seven that That's what we're on with. Okay. Johnson ignored in Episode Eight, and then gave no hooks to the next person. It'll be hell until I get back, and when I get back, it'll be worse. So there there was some there was some like I don't know. Ryan was was a little too smart for his own good there. Okay. That's the problem with him. But then again, when you write a whodunit, you can be too smart for your own good. It's fine. It actually works. Good luck, everybody. Kick some ass. Let's do this in 60 days. Neat. Star Wars. Star Wars Episode 3. Ooh. Well, that's it then. I think I've experienced Star Wars Episode 3. Revenge of the Sith. Here, let me... uh. Let me put on that sweet screensaver I got. God, that's so loud. Ah! Christ. Ah! Jesus. I think I turned it up for the for the thing. Okay, if I do that. Stop it! I wanna. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me do it this way. Okay, let me do it this way. 
because here's what I'm going to do. Now that I've conquered this video game, and yes, another video game conquered by me. Can you believe it? Uh, I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. Uh, if you want to win this copy of Star Wars Episode Three: Reven Revenge of the Sith Activity Center for the PC, then uh, let me turn on the giveaway thing. There we go. Yes. Just type in Star War into chat. Star War, no space. Uh, you, If you win, I will mail it to you. So if you type Star War into chat, that means you want me to mail this to you. So if you don't want me to mail this to you, I understand liking to win things. I get it. But truly, like, I can just tell you you won, and that, that can be it. You don't have to enter, because that's what this is for, is to, is to win this, me to send it to you. We're good? Good. Uh, I'm gonna... I need to use the restroom. So please enjoy this cool screensaver and I'll be right back. We need some music though, right? Well, hold on. <sighs> um... I wish I could... Bring up. Okay, that'll work. I wish I could bring up like a like a MIDI file and play it with my pre my Winamp scan, but this will be fine. Okay, I'll be right back. Ultra Mega Church. Ultra Mega Church, congratulations on winning this. I will contact you via Twitch DM. I did wash my hands, always. I gotta admit, I'm a Star Wars Activity Center review. I'm a little disappointed because I thought when it said it had all these goodies in there that they would be like in the thing. I thought there would be like a, a a bookmark on thick cardstock and a door hanger and stuff here, but no, no, it's not there. So maybe that's me. Maybe I got my my feelings set too high. Uh, the the printout of Chewbacca though. Granada Chewbacca I quite like. Big fan of that. Um, the games are pretty good. The, uh, the uh, bonus features were great. 10 out of 10. Check it out. <laughs> the Windows theme uh, will live forever. 
All right, what's next? Uh, that let's see here. I think it's the uh, it's either the Game Boy Advance or the DS game for Episode Three. That's for the the Star Wars prequel thon. Uh, but what's next on the stream is I have to eat some lunch. Then I'm gonna come back and uh, we're gonna play Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, I love Mega Man, and somehow I've never really played the Battle Network games. So let's get into that. It's also a sponsored gameplay, sponsored by Capcom, which is very exciting. Love all the work that they do. So I actually have a, a, a link. Not only are they sponsoring the gameplay, but I have a like a fancy referral link. So there's a cool little storefront you can go to. But uh, if you feel like checking the game out, you can do that. Uh, but we'll be back with some Mega Man pretty soon. So I'll see y'all in uh, two shakes of a Mega Man's uh, cyber boot. Yeah. Thunder Truck Rally. 